I know. So this is, uh, tell, tell me about this. This is, this is a standalone entry in sort of the Mad Max uh, franchise, if you will. Totally, yeah. So, I mean, it's important for us to give you, the player, the ability to play Mad Max. And there are certain key things about his, his character. Um, he's the, like, iconic anti-hero. But also his story arc. Um, you know, he, he, he's usually um, weathered by his uh, entanglements with humanity. Um, which always end up disastrously. Uh, he gets closer and closer to people because out of necessity, he needs to, to get where he wants, but then usually tragedy follows him and he's whipped back to a point of near insanity. So that's his story arc, but we want to put you in the seat of Mad Max and then we want to let you in this open world, uh, post-apocalyptic environment, we want to let you be the author of your own unique Mad Max story. Very cool, so we're checking out some gameplay here. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> it's got this open world that Avalanche is so well known for crafting. And, uh, you know, you guys have always been so good at, at creating an environment that it, it, it's almost a character onto itself. Tell me a little bit about the wasteland here that we're going to be seeing in the game. Yeah, so um, it's, that's definitely right. Uh, we want players to be able to spend many, many, many hours in the world. And it should keep rewarding them for exploring. So there should be surprises. Uh, in this case, we built the world by uh, concepting how this area looked before the apocalypse. So we built a working city, an oil refinery, some oil rigs, an industrial area, a financial district, uh, an airport and so on, and a, a bay with, with oil rigs and a harbor wall, and then we destroyed it. We let the apocalypse roll in. Um, we don't say exactly what that was, but it's probably a mixture of you know nuclear storms and, and war and uh, whatever. So uh, it's now covered over. The sea is uh, dried out, seabed. Um, the, a lot of the areas are covered over with sand. Um, pests, uh, pestilence, and, and disease has probably uh, ridden the whole area. So, but we still want you to be able to puzzle together, like decode what has happened here. And if, the more you explore, the more you're prepared to invest in that discovery. Uh, the more signs you'll see of this world as it was before the apocalypse. Now, I know that uh, vehicular combat, a big focus of the game, we'll get to that just in a second here, but I see Max kind of running around exploring, looks like scavenging supplies. Talk a little bit about uh, what you can do when you're not riding in that V8. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of customization uh, that you can do in the game, both to uh, th what we call the Magnum Opus, his great work, that's his signature vehicle, uh, but also to Max himself. He develops uh, his abilities, he gets some equipment and some upgrades for melee combat. Uh, we have a brawler melee combat mechanic, um, which I think is very authentic Max. It's brutal. Um, he knows that any particular uh, scenario or, or combat situation can be his last, so he's fighting for his survival. He's efficient, he, he shows no mercy, but not, not out of, you know, malice or evil, he's just, he, you know, he wants to survive and he, he's the perfect, uh, the perfect main character to, to keep himself alive in the wasteland. Very cool. So uh, right now it looks like we're draining some fuel out of a, out of a, of a he's, canister of He's actually sort. filling up his canteen with water. Okay, got there it. There are a few of those water sources uh, dotted around the wasteland. Um, they're hard to find, but there are some allies and, and uh, civilians in the world who will help you find some of these resources that are in great shortage. I hope he's pouring that through a Brita filter. That's all I've got to say. He's, he's used to eating some pretty disgusting stuff. <laughs> so what here we are. We're hopping into a, a vehicle, and this is obviously a signature uh, element of this game. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys approach the car combat aspect. Yeah, so that's definitely, I think, one of the most exciting parts of this game. Uh, we start off with Max losing his iconic interceptor um, in a battle with Scrotus' war boys. Um, and Max is really stripped bare of everything. And then the journey for you as the player is to fashion a vehicle that will allow Max to escape to the Plains of Silence and, and hopefully find some inner peace. He gets some companions like Chum Bucket, who you see in the back here. He's a Wasteland Blackfinger, uh, a fanatical mechanic um, who almost treats uh, vehicles and engines and just that whole mechanic uh, way of life as a religion. Mm. Um, total fanatic. So he gets some. Uh, friends to help him, but he, he gradually over time builds up uh, his very own, you as a player will build up your very own Wasteland War Machine. 
and it will be an expression of the choices that you make in the world, what directions you want to go in, and also the playing style that you choose. So uh, your magnum opus will be completely different to mine, and in fact, we'll be able to compare them in some online um, situations. Uh, you might choose something that is really heavyweight, has a massive ramming grill, um, but you're gonna need you know, tires with high traction, a heavy motor uh, to power that kind of um, vehicle. I might choose, your weakness is probably gonna be that you can't survive in rocky ground. You're gonna get stuck there, you're gonna be a beached whale, um, much more vulnerable. Whereas I might choose something that allows me to, better suspension, allows me to go over rugged, uh, rocky terrain and so on. Maybe explore more of the world that you can't get to. So your magnum opus will really be an expression of the choices you've made and your, your player style. Understood, so here we're seeing some combat actually. And I know in the world of Mad Max, I mean, supplies are very, very limited. Yep. Uh, bullets uh, come at a premium. So, so what are some of the strategies that players are gonna be able to use in car combat to take out the enemies? Yeah, so you see this uh, unfortunate, uh, I think it was a Scrotus Warboy being towed by the harpoon. <laughs> and in this, um, in this uh, demo experience here, you'll see a, a variety of weapons being used in this high octane, high paced, very physical uh, vehicular combat. Um, there's the harpoon, and that can pull off armor, it can pull drivers out of the wind windshield, um, it can uh, pull wheels off, it can also be used to shoot incendiary devices, these thunder sticks that you'll see from the Mad Max universe, mm. uh, almost like a rocket launcher. Uh, you will see Max using his iconic shotgun. Um, of course, you it wouldn't, would be no Mad Max game without exactly, that, right? Yeah. And, and if you're if you're playing tactically very well, you will notice that a lot of the enemies uh, have certain weaknesses or certain vulnerabilities to different types of weapon. Um, he also has a, uh, I think he's got a side burner installed here, which is a dual wielding flamethrower. Nice. It saps your fuel, but if, if you're in trouble and if you feel the need to uh, feel super powerful, you can turn that on and cause carnage. Um, he's got a sniper rifle attached. Uh, Chum Bucket uses the Harpoon and the Thunderpoon, which is this rocket launcher thing. But uh, he's also got a sniper rifle, which Max will uh, climb into the back of the vehicle and use to take down some of the perimeter defenses for some of the more heavily guarded locations in the world. So, yeah, wide array of weaponry. Um, and that's not including the sort of attacks that he uses just with, with driving. For example, he can attach rims that can shred holes in certain chassis to his, uh, to his wheels. He's got a side ram attack. He's also got the boost, which is perfect for, for front-on collisions or for T-boning um, uh, vehicles and so on. Uh, I, have you guys, there have, been, there have been some classic car combat games out there. I, I don't think I, they need any introduction. Have you guys taken any inspiration from them or is this sort of a fresh start for you guys? Did you just sort of start from the ground up? Uh, we, did, we did start from the ground up and we were really trying to um, capture as many of the elements that we love from um, the previous Mad Max films, for example, and and what feels right for this world. So you'll see, for example, Borders, uh, also a very, um, very like, iconic and, and nearly trademark aspect of the Mad Max universe. Guys hopping from one vehicle to yours, right. and attacking uh, with no real regard for their own lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's one now. We we'll see if Max succeeds in, in getting him off there. Before. Yeah. Now, what are your options if this happens to you? If the guy jumps on your well, you like can. That? Um, there's one. There's one, that's, yeah. a, that's straight to the point. Uh, you can use the shotgun, and um, you can try and scrape them off with a, a, a cliff wall or something, depending on the terrain that you're in. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of options. In fact, Chum Bucket was hiding in the back when that guy was on, but now when he sees he's safe, he'll come back out and he'll help you. And if you stop the car and the, the magnum opus is damaged, he'll climb onto the roof and start putting out the fire in your engine. And ah, nice. Tinkering and- I need one of those guys for my Mazda 3. Exactly. Um, Everyone so, should have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of modifications that you can do. It sounds like, I mean, gas is scarce. You know, you're, you're fighting for your life every minute of this. W w how do you guys break up this, like, intense car combat? Yep. Obviously, so, uh, you know, you do get out of the car sometimes. I'm curious, you know, are, are, there, are, there, are there ever, uh, do you fight guys mano e mano, like, like boss battles or tough battles that it's just max on, on, a, on a tough enemy? Absolutely. I mean, it just the main storyline there's a good balance between different types of scenarios the, the, the characters that you're meeting um, 
hand-to-hand -hand combat represents, it depends on the choices that you make, of course, in the open world, but it could easily represent 40% of the game time for certain players. Wow. Um, and hence the sort of upgrading abilities and the, the character progression um, related to hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's also a, a plethora of uh, weapons and options that you can use in hand-to-hand -hand combat, like um, thunder sticks can be used as a weapon, you can jab it into someone's chest, kick them back, if they happen to explode in a gang of other war boys, then they'll all catch fire and... Um, Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so equally brutal and high paced. Uh, but exploring the world is definitely something that we want uh, to use as a way to get a breather. Um, we like to, because of the perimeter defenses that are placed around certain camps, we like to encourage you to take out your binoculars and scout find a convoy, find one that you think, well, I'm probably going to be able to take this one up, take this one down, or, well, this one looks really heavily guarded. I'm going to have to go back, upgrade my magnum opus, get some more armor, some more armor, maybe more ammo um, before taking on this one. There's a, a feature that I really like, which is um, you, if you, if you pull the driver out of a Scrotus vehicle and don't destroy the vehicle, uh, you can jump into that car, approach a camp, and the camp won't get alerted because oh, interesting. They, they don't know it's Vehicular max. Vehicular stealth, that's, I, I might be a first. I don't yeah. think I've ever heard of that. Yep. So, um, in fact, they'll open the doors for you and welcome you with open arms. Oh, so my. Yeah. And then you, and you, you unload that double barrel right in their face. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm charmed. This is uh, very, very cool. Um, so, you know, you guys are so good with environments. And, and obviously, we're seeing some, some really gorgeous stuff here. It's, you know, gorgeous in a devastated, dilapidated kind of way here with this wasteland. But I'd be a little curious about, you know, some of the more uh, maybe urban, you may say, environments. There, are, These have, have come up in, in sort of the, the, the series history. So um, what are some other types of, of locations that players are going to find out about? Yep. Well, at first glance, as I, as I mentioned earlier on, it will seem like just a, a barren, desolate landscape. Um, and that's what we want to present you as the, as the player at the start. Uh, you shouldn't know what direction you need to take, you shouldn't know what the world has in store for you, and it should seem terrifying almost. Um, but as you start to get alliances, as you start to get information and intel from civilians in the wasteland, um, Chumbucket will give you hints as well, then you'll, you'll realize that there's a lot more hidden to this world. There are a lot of underground locations, again, well-preserved um, uh, reminiscences of the pre-apocalyptic world. Fascinating. So intact uh, areas that Little will... bubbles of civilization. Exactly, yeah. Wow. And, and you'll even find like pictures and notes from people um, from before whatever whatever hit us, hit us. <laughs> um, there's also um, staging posts for, for major areas of the, the storyline in Gastown is, is sort of the, the home of Scrotus and you, you're not going to be able to Max is convinced that he won't escape this um, this wasteland without a, a V8 engine, so that he can outrun the the biggest and baddest vehicles that Scrotus can throw at him. So he wants this V8, but unfortunately, it's located right in the le the lion's den. Um, so uh, Gastown is is definitely a, a massive staging post and looks completely different to anything you're seeing in this demo. You know, Max seems to find himself in that situation a lot with this V8. The V8's always out of his hands. He needs to get back to it. I mean, it, he should just switch to like a hybrid or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> get the get the fuel economy going for him. That that might help out. Exactly. He's got <laughs> some sort of mental block. Yeah, yeah, V8. yeah. Yeah, he's obsessed with that V8. Uh, well, very, very cool. So uh, thank you for joining us, Mad Max. Looking very, very good. It's a pleasure. I'm very intrigued. It's coming out this September on PS4. September 1st, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. 